Lurking in the shallows of Charleston sits a slumbering beast, one born as a human, but thanks to an evil scientist, it has since transformed into a gurgling mass of blood, muscle, and toxic goo. So where did the Grafton monster come from? Is it human? And why is it in Appalachia? Heading east of the Greenbrier and south of the isolated radio array, we can find a familiar building on this channel, the West Tech Building. If you want to know the whole story about West Tech and Huntersville, I have a dedicated video that covers the atrocities committed in this building along with the aftermath that occurred in Huntersville. There will be a link in the description below and the cards above to that video. Now let's head inside. Obviously inside we find more super mutants. These super mutants do scale with you, so clearing this building for the second time was no pushover. Pushing through to the laboratory, we can find various super mutants being held in stasis by containment tubes. Further in, we eventually find a room with a large chunk of wall missing. Just inside the broken wall, we can see the remains of one of those containment tubes. It has been broke open, and the green liquid that was inside has been drained on the floor. Next to the spill, we can find the Advanced Mutations Lab Terminal. Advanced Mutations Program the Super Mutant program has shown great promise. By tweaking the genomes, we are able to cultivate different strains of the virus, which produce varying results. Note: Most strains produce highly unstable results. Few are viable. Only genetic technicians above clearance level 5 are allowed to access the FEV recombinator, given prior approval by Dr. Ellis Kahn. Test Subject Reports Special Report Containment Breach Test subject AM52 has breached containment. Tracking program initiated. Tracking unit signal weak. Subject extremely dangerous. Kill or recapture on site. The term recapture suggests that they had to capture this creature in the first place. Maybe it's some sort of wild animal. Whatever creature broke containment must be roaming around Appalachia somewhere. A scary thought knowing what this lab is capable of. To find out what creature this was, let's look at the AM52 report. 10-14-2077. This is only about a week before the bombs fell. Phase 2 combination strain FEVS-06443 has finally taken to test subject AM52 and not resulted in a pile of quivering genetic biowaste. AM52 combines the traits that resemble a number of different species. The results are disturbing to say the least, but we have learned valuable insights into what these new strains are capable of. Most notable about the subject are the number of ocular organs along the enlarged upper torso, a second set of arms ending in clawed digits, and a single sickle-shaped claw on each inner toe. That a living, stable, functioning subject seems to be sustaining itself normally is a major accomplishment for the program. We will be keeping subject AM52 in isolated containment for observation until AM53 has finished incubating. If the two are able to cohabitate along with a standard mutated human test subject, we may try reintroducing them into the Huntersville site for further study. Because this post mentions several ocular organs on the body of this creature, we can assume it is talking about the Snallygaster. Now we'll be covering the Snallygaster in my next video, so stay tuned. But it goes on to mention subject AM53, so let's check it out. 10-23-2077. This is the very same day the bombs fell. Based on the success with AM52, we were confident in tweaking a few genomes for FEVS-006458. Unfortunately, the test subject grew too large to contain. The containment unit broke, but AM53 was unharmed. Indeed, despite this and its apparent lack of a discernible head, subject AM53 has survived its metamorphosis, far exceeding our expectations. Since our containment units were insufficient to hold the subject, we we have arranged for immediate transport off-site under sedation. Follow-up visits to AM53 will be scheduled for observation and recording. Now again, it's pretty easy to assume the creature that they're talking about is the Grafton monster because of its lack of a discernible head and its hulking size. So according to this post, it said that they were immediately transporting this creature off-site, and since they were doing that on the same day that the bombs fell, we can assume that the aftermath of the nukes caused the Grafton monster to escape. And that's why we see them roaming around Appalachia today. So it sounds like the Grafton monster, along with the Snallygaster, were concocted along with the super mutants in the green tanks of West Tech. Just like the super mutants, the Grafton monster was once a normal human, but after being injected with a tweaked form of FEVS-006458, it turned into the hulking beast we know from the game. Heading over to the Grafton monster's namesake, the town of Grafton, we can join an event called Grafton Day, and we hear from the Grafton mayor. 
proper surprise. It's Captain Fair speaking to everyone in the valley. It's Griffin Day! We are celebrating our town and its beloved mascot, the Griffin Monster. Ah, he may look scary, but I assure you his robot handlers have him completely under control. Come, join the parade, spend your money, and make sure to donate to my re-election campaign. <laughs> It gives us the objective to watch the parade, so let's see if we can find it. On the way to the parade, I ran into one of its handlers, this iBot. The Grafton Monster is our town's beloved mascot. Children are encouraged to stay out of the Grafton Monster's reach. He may look like a headless brute, but the Grafton Monster has a heart of gold. These level 1 iBots were the only thing keeping the Grafton monster under control, so it was never under control. Eventually, we confront the Grafton monster. We can see that its features are greatly exaggerated. Things like its feet now look like elephant feet, and it looks like it's in a serious need of a pedicure. When attacking, it can shoot some sort of sludge from its back and hurt the player in an area of effect. It can also reach to its back and grab a handful of whatever it is and throw it at you. Let's put this thing out of its misery. While we are still in Grafton, we can head over to the Grafton's mayor office and find the first of two radio drama holotapes, called The Beast of Grafton. Welcome back, dear listeners. It's time once again to put aside all you think you know, all you believe to be true. Time to open your mind to the strange, bizarre, and sometimes terrifying world that exists in the shadows and fringes of our own, where myth, legend, and Roma are made real. Yes, it's time for more thrilling Tales from the West Virginia Hills. Tonight's episode, The Beast of Grafton, is brought to you by Dandy Boy Apples. Apples so good, they never go bad. And remember, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. That's Dandy Boy Apples. Fresh, delicious, and dandy every time. Pick up a box today. Our tale begins in the rural hills near Grafton, where locals have reported a strange creature lurking in the woods. Robbie Cockrell and Peggy Mansfield were out on a date, celebrating Peggy's birthday. A full moon loomed large as they drove. Robbie, you're going too fast. Don't worry, this nuclear roadster had a like a dream. Where are you taking me anyway? I told you, it's a birthday surprise. Way out here in the woods? There's nothing this far out of Grafton, except that hospital by the river. Wait, I bet we're going to that new drive-in over in Clarksburg, right? Just so you can show off your slick new hot rod. Ah, uh, come on. Don't be like that, Peggy. I just thought the drive-in would be romantic. Oh, Robbie. Robbie, look out!
As you heard, they used the real-life Grafton Monster witness of Robert Cockrell. The first part of this radio drama matches up pretty well with the real-life lore, except Robert never wrecked his car. You can watch my dedicated video to the Grafton Monster's real story if you want more information about that. Here's part two. Tonight, we bring you the final chapter of The Beast of Grafton. When last we left off, two teenagers, Robbie Cockrell and Peggy Mansfield, were running for their lives after a harrowing car accident, trying to escape a frightening creature stalking them. See? You're doing great. Just like when me won that three-legged race in the park. We're almost to the hospital. So there's the story of the Grafton Monster, a science experiment gone wrong. I hope everybody enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe, it really helps out my channel. Also if you've made it this far in the video, consider joining my channel's membership. You get a cool little Mothman or Flatwoods Monster symbol next to your name when you comment, and it goes a long way in supporting my channel, so thank you. Also consider following me on Twitter, it's the best place for me to keep in contact with you guys. But anyway, this has been Widgeon TV. thanks for watching guys. Heaven, 
West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains, Shannon. 